Kia ora, salamat siang. My name is Gregory Roebuck and I am the principal of Newland School in Auckland, currently completing my Masters of Educational Leadership at the University of Malaya. The vision for my school is that we make a difference for our students and that they have opportunities to learn in authentic contexts with effective teachers who make a difference for their learning through providing opportunities for others to develop their leadership. Distributed leadership is based on a model of trust, heavily dependent on successful relationships within a school. And it is a model of leadership that reflects the current climate in education. Distributed leadership is about quality leadership and quality teaching that ultimately improves student learning and achievement. My thinking around distributed leadership and the influences have been recently Alma Harris and some of the work and the researches I've been exposed to through my master's work. My thinking as a principal has evolved through 14 years of leadership. I've worked in a school that has been transformed to become a successful school of choice by my local community. Understanding models of leadership for me has been critical and the influence of people such as Alma Harris and others has really confirmed my beliefs, especially around developing others' leadership within a school setting. The characteristics of distributed leadership are an ability to be an effective communicator and to be able to connect with people, to be able to identify talents and empower others to develop their leadership, to be a self-reflective practitioner who uses inquiry to develop thinking around leadership, that there is a strong commitment to a professional learning that supports a strategic vision, that systems are designed based around evidence gathered that supports student learning. Collaborative relationships builds capacity within teacher pedagogy and leadership. Safe environment based on an understanding of diverse values and an ability to engage others and an ability to network and create networks for learning. Michael Fullan discusses some of these features in his white paper. Implementing organisational improvement involves firstly gathering the baseline data, diagnosing the problem to see where to go to next. Strategies are then developed collaboratively that are used to identify priorities and improve practice. Having a shared knowledge and shared understanding of leadership to make improvements is an important part of distributed leadership. A key feature of distributed leadership is the Māori word for noatanga. This Māori word we use in New Zealand and it means working together and building relationships. Valuing people is a critical feature of distributed leadership. My assistant principal Claire Jackson explains this. The ways in which I have developed distributed leadership within my syndicate uh, in a, quite a few different ways. Basically, it comes from the relationship that I have with Greg and that he has modelled distributed leadership with me. And then I then have taken what he's shown me and coached me and mentored me through. And I'm applying the same things within my own team, but in a different setting. It's also, for me, about building really strong relationships within your team and that with an effective team that runs well with good communication and understanding, then I can work with them and develop distributing leadership amongst them. It also involves inquiry that I'm differentiating now but to, amongst my syndicate, the things that we do, we don't all do the same thing anymore. I have a great understanding of their strengths and their weaknesses and I put together a program based around that for their um, inquiries, which is through lots of discussion and negotiation. That's then tracked over the year and changes made when necessary. It's also in other ways that the other members of the team are now starting to step forward and take responsibility on their own, but my role is still to facilitate and be an active part of the way that they're going, but also allowing them to take that lead role. Recent research by Viviane Robinson on instructional leadership credits successful leadership as a key driver in securing and sustaining improved outcomes for students. In my opinion, Robinson's and Harris's work are closely aligned with each other because they are focused on the development of effective teacher pedagogy and this relationship that also impacts on student learning. Self-reflective leaders make a difference. And I say this because using a model of distributed leadership also involves being an instructional leader. So I feel that the two approaches are quite complementary and certainly in my experience as a leader, I've had to be an instructional leader and I have also distributed leadership. I believe that if you are a great leader, you can create a climate of success for teachers and students. And a very important piece of leadership is the ability to identify and grow other leaders. Stephen De Bruyne, a leader of ICT at my school, will share his thoughts. 
The relationships within our school are strong and supportive. I've been given the opportunity to develop my strength and interest in ICT. I've learned from Greg that leading others effectively is supporting, guiding and modelling my strengths and allowing them to feel passionate and drive change in themselves. Being a leader in ICT has helped me become self-reflective and refine my leadership with others. At our school, if I show interest in a particular area, I am encouraged and supported to develop myself my teaching and others as well. Professional learning communities support professional learning of others. It's an opportunity for people to come together and share knowledge across schools within schools and at the same time learn from each other and this is done in a number of ways. I've been part of communities that are online such as WhatsApp, Twitter communities where people share their knowledge. Learning from each other and with each other is an element of distributed leadership. Sharing of leadership also happens face-to-face -face and principal groups that I am involved in. Changing teachers' practice is not just a matter of capability, competence or confidence. You need to build opportunities within a system for teachers to routinely and actively engage in activities and improve practices and where there are opportunities to learn from other professionals within their school and also with other school settings. The blended learning social media is a very effective and powerful way of disseminating knowledge and sharing and learning from each other. I think that with any approach to learning or teaching or leadership, it's very important to look closely at your own context before you decide on the way forward. So effective leadership involving distributed leadership is a matter of looking at what is going well within your school and at ways of developing further the leadership in others. Being familiar with your own context and identifying the strengths of your own context is a powerful way of gathering the information required in order to be strategic. I think teachers but when you make a difference, you have an environment where a school works together, collaborates, shares knowledge, and through that model you see people engaging happily and willingly in learning, which impacts on student learning. So distributed leadership empowers others and makes people want to become better at what they do, and they see this as a professional opportunity, and it's rewarding to see outcomes that are successful, and that students become able to understand the range of opportunities that come from this model. I think working individually is lonely. I think deprivatizing practice in the current climate of learning and teaching, which is changing so quickly, requires us to work collaboratively in teams. Distributed leadership is a model that supports that and allows teachers to deprivatize their practice, to learn from each other and to build capacity around each other's learning that develops leadership. Distributed leadership develops student leadership. It provides opportunities for students to participate, to collaborate, to co-construct their learning together and to share it with others. It's the model that supports teachers' learning, teacher development too, as they sit nicely together. Student voice is a critical part of this model. Our school values provide a framework for our students to be leaders. Students develop their own learning pathways using a range of tools. They are encouraged to think, make decisions, collaborate, and learn from and with each other. Here's a Māori expression of whakatoki that says, highlight my strengths and my weaknesses will disappear. I believe that you start by looking at the strengths of the individuals within an organisation and then you start providing opportunities to develop certain strengths within others. That then leads to people becoming comfortable with participating collectively in a shared vision for the school. Distributed leadership is an inclusive model that allows people to grow, but also to be empowered in their role as a professional educator within a school setting. The achievement of our students is our core business. The pros are that distributed leadership is collaborative and it involves people interacting across schools, but also within schools and developing their knowledge, co-constructing their learning together. Leaders are forced to rethink their authority. It takes away the model of transactional leadership, which is top down, focuses just on administrative tasks and relies on individuals being able to do their jobs. Teachers are able to coach, mentor and share others' knowledge. The cons of distributed leadership are that the implementation can take time. Another concern can be that the leadership is corrupted when it's shared. A colleague could be undermining the collective responsibility of the leadership and the commitment for the common good that can cause issues for the leader of the school. Distributed leadership can be accompanied by accountability and can be elusive if communication is not transparent. In summary, my school currently is a growing school. I focused on developing leadership in others and particularly within my management team. I've asked them to look at developing leadership in teams. The development of leadership is embedded in performance management inquiry. Developing performance goals are supported by an action plan that identifies how they're going to do it, what are they going to do, and what are the outcomes will be. This shapes the performance goals for the following year. This sits along the design process or data gathering of distributed leadership. 
that to me is a very important piece that we're clear about what we're trying to do and how we're going to make a difference so by gathering data researching getting the information know what we're doing and making a decision distributed leadership has supported our school transformation and success as a high performing school as can be seen by our education review Thank you.